Hello everyone, my name is Neon, one half of that gamer couple, and in this guide I hope to show you what I think is the most efficient way to start a new world in Minecraft. Depending on the game mode you're going to play in your world, creative, survival or hardcore, you will have different needs. For instance, for creative, the start location will have less of an impact than any world will do as you can just fly around for the best spot anyway. But if you're going to play survival Minecraft and are a redstone builder, you will have different needs than if you just like to build nice structures. As a redstoner, you might want to have a swamp nearby with a witch hut so you can make a witch farm for redstone. While as a builder, you will want to have as many different biomes nearby so you can have easy access to all the different building blocks and if you can find it, maybe a village so you can easily trade with the villagers for different items. So what I do to accomplish that is I go to create a world I set the mode to creative, independent of whatever game mode I'm gonna play, and just say create new world. I don't change anything. And then I'm just gonna fly around, see what kind of different biomes there are nearby. So I can already see a swamp here. There's a dark oak wood forest. There's another swamp right over there. There's a savanna over there. So again, depending on what you wanna do, also a desert. So this is might actually be a nice start because you've got at least three different wood types relatively nearby. You've got a desert for glass and whatnot, and you have got a swamp. So if you're a redstoner, you can maybe find a witch hut so you can make a nice redstone collection farm or witch farm. But if you don't like it, this is Minecraft, they're infinite worlds. So just escape your game and just create a new world again in creative and fly around a bit until you find one world that you really, really like because you're gonna spend a lot of time in this world. Unless, of course, you're playing hardcore, where you, well, basically try to survive as long as possible. So again, just fly around. So this is basically just one big savanna. There's, well, there's a desert nearby here. But other than that, there's no real big differences or different biomes. Maybe not the best start. So I'll probably not use this one. So after cycling through a couple of worlds, I finally found the world that I like. I like this one because there's flower fields nearby, there's a village nearby, there's some spruce tree nearby, and another forest right over there. There's a swamp right here, which potentially has a witch hut, so for a witch farm. And yeah, there's some cool features here that I like. So if I'm going to start this world, I might pick this one. So what I do then is I escape from this world. So I select the world I just created and say recreate, I give it a name and I set the mode to survival this time and just say create new world. And there we have a nice, fresh, clean world with some futures nearby that we like. And we can finally start playing this game. So we're gonna start this game like any game. First thing you always have to do is punch a tree. Now we want to get exactly four logs. So as soon as you've got those four logs, you want to convert them to planks and you want to get a crafting table and you want to get 12 sticks. Then somewhere near where there's an open wall or a cave or whatever, you want to plunk down your crafting table and you want to craft exactly one pickaxe. Now don't craft all the other wooden tools because since we're nearby a stone wall we can easily get three stones and we're gonna go straight from wood tools to stone tools and from there out we can just get some more stones and create all the different tools that we want so a stone pickaxe, a stone sword, a stone shovel and a furnace. Now as soon as you've got all your stone tools and your furnace you want to take your crafting bench with you and you want to get about 16 logs because 16 logs makes one full stack of wood and that's basically what we want to get. As soon as you've got about the 16 logs you want to get starting getting food so you want to kill some animals nearby. Now you want to be specifically also look out for sheep because we want to make a pet and yeah for that we need wool. And we can use a bed to sleep through the night and don't have to deal with all the hostile mobs. 
Now I tend to keep the chickens alive because they are a great source to make a automated food farm early game. Even though it might not be the best food, chicken is pretty easy to get automated. Um, what you can do is if you ever see a chicken that laid an egg, just get the egg as well, like right here. Um, because that's you can also use to make the automated farm. As soon as you think you've got enough raw food or your hunger bar is getting low, you can start looking for a cave for coal and iron. Of course, the iron we need for iron tools and armor and the coal we need to smelt the iron and cook the food. When you have your first three iron ingots, what you want to do is you want to turn that into iron ingots as quickly as possible because, again, we don't want to keep using our stone pickaxe but we want to move to iron tools. So again, that's all I do with efficiency because an iron pickaxe is much faster than a stone pickaxe. One of the things that I like to do when I start caving is keep all my torches on one side of the wall as I did here so that I always know that, okay, my torches are right now on the left side. So now I'm going deeper into the cave. And when I'm walking back, I just need to keep the torches on the right hand side of me. And I'll know I'll always be going back to where I started. As soon as you've smelted up enough iron ore to iron ingots, you want to make iron armor. And if you have the iron for it, also make an iron sword. If you don't know how to make all these recipes, you've got a little book icon here. Or you, of course, you can look online. And it will show you from all the items that you have in your inventory, how you can just make them. So just click it and it shows up iron helmet. So now that we've got our full set of iron armor and our iron sword, we can go start looking for diamonds. So diamonds spawn at Y equals one to 16, which is basically lava level. And one of the ways that you can look for diamonds is basically just follow the caves all the way down to that lava level. But of course, then you have to deal with mobs like those guys there. The other thing that you can do is basically mine all the way to Y equals 11 which is basically one level up from uh, all the lava lakes and then start branch mining. While you do this, you can just make a staircase down and don't forget to light up the staircase down with torches so you don't get attacked by the various hostile mobs. We are now at Y equals 11, which you can check by pressing F3. And then on the left hand side, you can see here X, Y, Z and we're now at 11. So now that we're at y equals 11, we're going to place down our crafting table, place down our furnace, and I also made a chest where we can put all or most of our valuable stuff in, or at least not the stuff that we need for branch mining. So basically what you do with branch mining is you make a two tall by one wide path, and then every three blocks, you basically mine as far as you can in a one by one hole on both sides. And then you continue on. So one of the techniques that I use to know when I need to place another torch is I basically stand against the wall and I mine all the way to the end and make my own path. And I do that two times. And then at the end of this wall on the left hand side, I will place another torch. And then I know that in this area here, it's not dark enough for mobs to spawn. Then I again count to one, two, three, and I mine out all the way to the end again in the hopes of finding diamonds. So I also tend to mine out any minerals that I find like redstone in this case, but of course also gold, iron, and lapis lazuli. Coal, I tend not to care too much about unless I really need it. And there we have our very first diamonds and it didn't take so long. I think it's only a couple of branch mining points here. And we found our very first diamond, so we're going to mine those. And then, of course, as soon as we have these, we are going to make our first diamond tools. There we have our first diamond pickaxe. The other three I'm going to put in our safety box right there in case this one breaks. But for now, I'm just going to keep mining with this diamond pickaxe to get more diamonds and iron because we want to make a automated chicken farm. If you're bench mining and you ever find one of these lava pools, it's always a good idea to just have a quick look around to see if there are any open source diamonds around. Like for instance, there's one here, but if you look very closely, there's also one there. So yeah, take a quick look around and then 
find what you want and then you can just continue on again. For the chicken farm, we need some dispensers and for dispensers we need some bows, which means we need some strings. Now, of course, you can kill some spiders. So if you do see them and you feel up for it, of course, feel free to take on the spiders. But if you're caving or branch mining and you happen to find a mine shaft, this is a great source for string. As you can see here, there's some string here and there's also a creeper coming my way. You will need six string to make the dispensers. So after mining about an hour, I now have enough diamonds to make my diamond armor. And you will need again 24 diamond or iron to make a full armor set. So just one, two, three, four. Just one helmet, please. And I still have got some left. So I think that was pretty good uh, strip mining session. So now that we have our full diamond armor, we can focus on food. And for that, I would like to use the chickens that I talked about earlier to make an automated chicken farm. To make our chicken farm, we will need two observers and one comparator. And for that, will we need another quartz, which of course you can get in the nether. So we'll need to make a nether portal. To make a nether portal, you will need 10 blocks of obsidian. And to mine those obsidian blocks, you will need a diamond pickaxe. A iron pickaxe will not work. And you make it in a two block direction like so. And then three high. And then we'll need any block. We can cross this and you will need to make a flint and steel, which is just flint and steel and flint you can get from gravel patches, gravel blocks. And you will light up the nether portal. And now, of course, we've got our full diamond armor. Nether should not be a scary place to go to. And when you're in the nether, you don't need to be too scared except for maybe for ghasts. And what you're looking for are these types of blocks. These are quartz ore blocks. And if you mine them, you get quartz. And we'll need just three. I'll just mine a little bit extra. So of course, if you want, you can export the nether. I just need the nether quartz for the chicken farm. So I'm just in and out like maybe two minutes and then done already. So the chicken farm design that I'll be using is one from Fidart Cavia. I will not be showing you the complete build, just the end results and I will put a link in the description to his video so you can check it out for yourself. And there you have the whole chicken farm built. It's really really small, it's just one white basically if you don't count these panels on the side. And all I need to do is put a lava bucket in the top dispenser right over there. Put my eggs in the dispenser over here. This is a temporary dispenser and put a lever on the side and then just click the lever to dispense the eggs and hopefully there will be a chicken inside the cauldron and there i heard one chicken at least coming see there's a chicken in right side right there right now now i only had a couple of eggs if you want to save your eggs you can just remove this redstone right here and then the Dispensers won't fire, so there will not be any chickens going into the farm right now. They will end up all in this dispenser. As soon as this dispenser, or there's enough chicks in this dispenser, you can move them to this dispenser over here and then just keep flicking the switch until you think there's enough chickens in there. And with that done as well, we are at the end of this tutorial guide. So where could you go from here? Well. I suggest you start enchanting your items and perhaps go visit the village to start trading for items and enchanted books. And maybe after that you can start looking for a place to settle down and begin your base. So all I have left to tell you is how you can enter to win a Java Edition gift code to start playing Minecraft yourself. All you have to do is be subscribed to this channel, leave a like on this video and place a comment below with what you thought was the best advice I gave in this video. Pretty easy right? We will announce the winner in our next Let's Play video, which should be out next weekend. So be sure to check that video out as well. And with that, I hope this tutorial guide was helpful for you. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.